Today we're going to be talking about how to determine the radius of convergence of a Maclaurin series. And in this particular problem, we've been given the function f of x is equal to cosine of x squared. Now, whenever you're dealing with a Maclaurin series and you're trying to find whether or not the Maclaurin series converges, or if you're trying to find its radius of convergence, it's really helpful to decide whether or not your Maclaurin series is similar at all to some well-known Maclaurin series. For example, in our case, cosine of x is a well-known Maclaurin series, and we've been given its sum here. Obviously, our function cosine of x squared is very similar to cosine of x, except that in place of x, we would have to substitute x squared. It's also important to note that the radius of convergence for cosine of x is infinity. So in order to determine whether cosine of x squared is also convergent and to find its radius of convergence, what we'll do is go ahead and substitute x squared in place of x into the well-known sum for cosine of x. So we'll say the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n. And now right here in place of x, we'll substitute x squared, which is from our problem. So we'll say x squared raised to the 2n divided by 2n factorial. And when we simplify that, what we can do is combine the exponents on this x squared here, because since we have x squared then raised to the 2n, we can multiply 2 by 2n and get 4n. So we'll get this sum here, negative 1 to the n, and then in the numerator here, x to the 4n all over 2n factorial. At this point, we need to determine whether or not this series right here in its simplified form that we've obtained, we need to use a convergence test to determine whether or not it converges. And because we have factorial in this series, because we have 2n factorial, it's likely that we'll end up using ratio test. Whenever you see factorial, ratio test is probably the first thing you want to try. So ratio test tells us that when we take the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of the series where we plug n sub 1 in for n, divided by the series itself, a sub n, we'll get some value l. And if l is less than 1, we know by the ratio test that the series converges absolutely. If l is greater than 1, we know that the series diverges. So we're going to go ahead and use ratio test here, and we'll say that l is going to be equal to the limit as n goes to infinity, and here we'll plug in n plus 1 everywhere where we have n in our original series. So we'll get negative 1 instead of to the n here, we'll get to the n plus 1 times x to the 4n plus 4, because we'll do 4 times n plus 1, all divided by 2n plus 2 factorial, because when we multiply n plus 1 by 2, we get 2n plus 2. So all of that divided by our original series, which is negative 1 to the n times x to the 4n, all divided by 2n factorial. We're going to be taking the absolute value of that. Now from here, we can, instead of dividing one fraction by another, we can multiply the fraction on top by the reciprocal of the fraction on the bottom. And that's how we always simplify when it comes to using ratio test. So what we'll get now is negative one to the n plus one times x to the four n plus four, all divided by two n plus two factorial. And instead of dividing by the denominator here, instead we'll multiply by the reciprocal. So in the numerator now, we'll just get 2n factorial, so we'll get 2n factorial, and in the denominator, we'll have our negative 1 to the n times x to the 4n, and again, absolute value of this whole thing. Now from here, we want to match up like terms in order to simplify this. So what I mean by that, n goes to infinity, what I mean by that is that we're going to look for terms with like bases. So for example, we have this negative one raised to the n plus one in the numerator, and we have negative one raised to the n in the denominator. They both have the same base, which is negative one. When that's the case, we can subtract the exponent in the denominator from the exponent in the numerator. So we take n plus one, the exponent here, and we subtract n, n plus one minus n, is just 1. So then our result is just the base negative 1 
raised to the first power raised to the one or just negative one. We'll do the same thing here with x to the 4n plus 4. So we have here x to the 4n plus 4 and x to the 4n. They have the same base, which is x. So that means we can take 4n plus 4 and we can subtract that exponent in the denominator here, 4n. 4n minus 4n goes away and we're just left with x to the 4. So we have then x to the 4 in the numerator. Now we can go ahead and deal with 2n factorial and 2n plus 2 factorial and it's probably easiest to list those out and see what cancels. So 2n factorial in the numerator what we end up with is 2n times 2n minus 1 times 2n minus 2 because remember factorial if we have for example 4 factorial we get 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which is the same really as 4 times 4 minus 1 times 4 minus 2 times 4 minus 3, etc. So here, same thing, 2n times 2n minus 1 times 2n minus 2, dot, dot, dot. Now in the denominator here where we have the 2n plus 2 factorial, what we'll get is 2n plus 2 times 2n plus 1 because we get 2n plus 2 minus 1 is just 2n plus 1. 2n plus 1 minus 1 is just 2n times 2n minus 1 times 2n minus 2 dot dot dot. And we can see from this that we'll actually get 2n, 2n minus 1, 2n minus 2 to cancel, and every other term after that will be repeated in the numerator and denominator, so they're all going to cancel, and we're just left with the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of negative x to the fourth all divided by 2n plus 2 times 2n plus 1. Now because we're taking the limit as n goes to infinity, we're dealing with the variable n here. This variable x to the fourth isn't going to affect our limit, so we can go ahead and pull that out in front and say the limit l is going to be the absolute value of negative x to the fourth, pull that out in front, times the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of 1 over 2n plus 2 times 2n plus 1 like this. Now we can evaluate at infinity. If we plug infinity into this value here, what we see is that the denominator is going to be infinitely large and we'll have 1 divided by this infinitely large number. Whenever we see that, we know that the limit as n approaches infinity is going to be 0. So we're going to get 0 times this absolute value here of negative x to the fourth. Obviously the whole thing is just going to be 0. So we're going to get l is equal to 0. If we go back to our ratio test, we can see that if L is less than 1, then the series is absolutely convergent. Of course, 0 is less than 1, so we know that the series is absolutely convergent. Now, because we've shown that it converges, we've also automatically shown that the radius of convergence is R equals infinity because substituting x squared into cosine here doesn't change the radius of convergence as opposed to just having this x value inside cosine here. And since we know that the radius of convergence for cosine of x is already infinity, we can say that the radius of convergence for cosine of x squared is also infinity. And that's why I say whenever you can compare the function you've been given to a well-known Maclaurin series like 1 over 1 minus x, cosine of x, sine of x, e to the x, anything like that, it's very useful because you already know the radius of convergence for these well-known Maclaurin series. And if yours is similar enough like this where you can just take, for example, this x squared value and substitute it for x, then you get the radius of convergence thrown in. You know that the radius of convergence is going to be the same. So in conclusion, we know that the function cosine of x squared, the Maclaurin series of that function is absolutely convergent and that the radius of convergence is equal to infinity. So I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, like this video down below and subscribe to be notified of future videos.